Hello, my name is Valerie Nash, and I serve as the Chief of Staff at the Foundation for Ethnic Understanding. I am so pleased and honored to be here today with two of our nation's most distinguished civil rights leaders. Welcome, Mr. Mark Morial. Welcome, Rabbi Mark Schneier. Mr. Mark Morial is described as one of the few national leaders to possess street smarts and boardroom savvy. He is the current president and CEO of the National Urban League, the nation's largest historic civil rights and urban advocacy organization. He served as the highly successful and popular mayor of New Orleans as well as the president of the U.S. Conference of Mayors. He previously was a Louisiana state senator and was a lawyer in New Orleans with an active high-profile practice. He is a leading voice on the national stage in the battle for jobs, education, housing, and voting rights equity. Rabbi Mark Schneier is the president of FFEU, which is the Foundation for Ethnic Understanding. Rabbi Schneier founded FFEU in 1989 with the late Joseph Papp, while tensions were increasing between the Jewish and African American communities. For the past 33 years, FFEU has been instrumental in repairing this historic alliance. In 2014, as it celebrated its 25th anniversary, FFEU was honored by the United States Congress as the National Address for Black Jewish Relations. Rabbi Schneier is also the author of Shared Dreams, Martin Luther King Jr. and the Jewish Community. I feel honored to work and serve at FFEU as the Chief of Staff. I marvel at the breadth and depth of work that the Foundation has done for the past three decades to strengthen black Jewish relations and rebuild the historic black Jewish alliance. Rabbi Schneier and Mr. Morial have a long history of collaboration. Recently, they worked together on FFEU's unprecedented civil rights leadership series with President Derek Johnson of the NAACP, Reverend Jesse Jackson of the Rainbow Push Coalition, Reverend Al Sharpton of the National Action Network, and Dr. Charles Steele of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. Today, we are here for a very important discussion during Black History Month, a conversation on Black Jewish relations in the United States. We know that the special Black Jewish bond is very significant to the civil rights era. We are dedicating the celebration of Black History Month to this particular issue. We only have 25 minutes to touch on a variety of topics, so let us begin. Hey, thank you. Sadly, in contemporary America, we are seeing a disturbing rise of anti-Semitic and also anti-Black incidents and rhetoric. Mr. Morial, we'll begin with you. Is this just a macabre coincidence, or is there a thread that connects them? Well, thank you for having me today, and uh, great to be with you, Rabbi, and thank you for hosting this show. No, it is not a coincidence. There is a thread. It's a thread of nationalism and hatred, white nationalism and hatred that's being promoted in certain quarters of American society. We've seen people at the highest levels of leadership promote this, and what's, uh, what's uh, What's coincided with it is a rise in hate crimes mm -hmm. against Jews, against African Americans, against Muslims, against LBGTQ communities, against Latinos, mm -hmm. uh, against some that would be referred to as other Americans. We have to stand together, stand up, and stand against it because it has no place in the nation that we are and the nation that we're trying to build. So there should be no misunderstanding that this is not simply coincidental. This is being driven, uh, promoted, and promulgated by a philosophy of hatred and intolerance that has to be cut off 
uh, at its knees. It has to be challenged at every turn. Thank you. Rabbi Mark Schneier. Uh, thank you, Valerie. Thank you, Mark, uh, for giving me the honor uh, mm -hmm. to participate in this discussion with you both. Um, as Mark just said, speaking of standing together, when you look back to the civil rights struggle, it was that historic partnership of blacks and Jews that brought about many of the greatest social and political changes in our nation. And when it came to the civil rights of blacks in particular, there was no segment of American society that provided as much and as consistent support to Dr. King and to the black community as did the Jewish community. As Mark just mentioned and pointed to a litany of anti-Semitic, anti-black uh, rhetoric diatribe attacks on our respective communities. Uh, here we are, um, some 50, 60 years out from the civil rights struggle, when there is this urgent need for our two communities to come together, to work together, to stand together in the face of this new form of racism and anti-Semitism. Thank you, Rabbi Mark Schneier. You speak about the urgent need of communities working together. Here is an issue, a timely issue, that you can both work on together, voting rights. Uh, on voting rights, President Biden recent, recently spoke about this moment as being a choice between John King and Bull Connor. Um, do you think that contemporary America resembles the America that saw the rise of the Black Jewish Alliance and Jewish involvement in the civil rights struggle? So I think it's important. Rabbi Mark Schneier has talked about this, trying to rebuild and strengthen the alliance. And to understand that in the, in the crucible of the 1950s and 1960s, uh, it was dominated by the post-World War II uh, uh, climate. And what we had seen in World War II was the horrors of the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. And in the United States, uh, we had been through the rise of the Klan, uh, the scourge of lynching and uh, the defense of segregation by many, that shared, if you will, suffering, brought communities together in a profound way. Uh, we've got to educate a new generation mm -hmm. about why the alliance came together. In my own hometown, New Orleans, the first time I ever had an opportunity to swim in a pool was at the Jewish Community Center in New Orleans because of the relationship that my parents who were in the civil rights movement had built with Jewish leaders uh, at that time. Uh, I point that out because I think in today's world, uh, to understand the alliance and its historical antecedents is one of the things we've got to promote. It doesn't mean that there's a perfect storm of cooperation on every single issue. It means fundamentally mm -hmm. that uh, this struggle today against hatred, uh, against racism and anti-Semitism uh, is something that we have to share each other's history and experiences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jewish communities uh, uh, and black communities have to learn more about the history of each community to understand why in today's 21st century America, this alliance, and, and, and an alliance that is amongst blacks and Jews, and it goes beyond our communities, is the alliance necessary to push back against hatred and to build the America of the 21st century that is tolerant, that is equitable, uh, that uh, provides not just hollow pronouncements of freedom, but freedom to vote and the freedom to live and the freedom to be the person that you want to be to celebrate your culture and celebrate your history and celebrate your ethnicity. That is the America we're trying to build in the 21st century. Thank you, Mr. Morial. Rabbi Mark Schneier. Well, speaking of knowing our shared history, 
Go back to 1963, 1964, the two years before the Voting Rights Act um, that uh, President Johnson uh, enacted. Um, look at the role that the Jewish community, particularly from the North, mm -hmm. played in terms of the uh, Freedom Rides, the Freedom Summers. I believe there are reports that of all the uh, hundreds if not thousands of college students that came from the North down to the South to help blacks register to vote, more than 70% of those students were Jews. When the general Jewish population um, comprised of only 2% in terms of the greater country. And here we are today, there's no question that there are forces attempting to suppress the rights of blacks and other minorities to vote. Mm -hmm. And it is incumbent, it's a responsibility on the part of the Jewish community to maintain the same vigilance that we did in 63 and 64. Thank you, Rabbi Schneier. Speaking of the Black Jewish Partnership, what were the historical circumstances that made the Black Jewish Alliance during the civil rights struggle so very unique? I think it was, as I spoke of earlier, it's this notion of uh, shared experiences of oppression. Hmm. Uh, Jews in this country faced uh, anti-Semitism from the beginning and on a consistent basis. Uh, blacks uh, had uh, the experiences of slavery mm -hmm. and segregation. And then we had the experiences of violence and terrorism in the 20th century. Mm -hmm. For blacks, it was lynching. Uh, for blacks, it was uh, Tulsa, which is just one example of uh, the use of mass violence on historic black communities. Mm -hmm. For Jews, it was the experience of Hitler's vicious uh, Holocaust and terrorism uh, and, and uh, the entire mm -hmm. philosophy undergirding it. And I think in 1945 and beyond, uh, when black communities and Jewish communities looked at their own experiences, there was this you know, understanding that uh, this notion of oppression, which it, which uh, and this system of mm -hmm. oppression, and the endorsement of oppression by power and officials in power, had to be counteracted. And so I think it led to uh, the alliance. I know in the South, uh, and I'm a son of the South, uh, that uh, many many leaders in the Jewish community in the 50s and 60s stood up. Mm -hmm. Uh, and stood with African Americans who were fighting to end segregation, to achieve voting rights, to achieve civil rights. And that story, and Rabbi Schneider's talked about it, I don't think is told enough, understood enough. Uh, and therefore, because it's not told and understood enough, people may not have a clear sense mm -hmm. of the contemporary context of why the alliance is so I think important to who we are and to today's battles. When civil rights leaders uh, went and met uh, with the uh, New, York, New York Police Department about uh, two years ago, a year and a half ago, two years ago, it's before the pandemic, to talk about the rise in hate crimes in New York mm -hmm. and looked at the information and data right here in New York we learned that the highest spike was anti-Semitic. And then there were spikes in hate crimes against blacks and Latinos and Muslims as well. Uh, and the important thing is we see this new rise and it's directed at multiple communities. And there has to be a shared understanding mm -hmm. of what it is and why confronting it and counteracting it is our business together. I would also give a lot of credit to the historic Black Jewish Alliance, to Dr. King himself. Mm -hmm. 
Martin Luther King Jr. understood that a people who fight for their own rights are only as honorable as when they fight for the rights of all people. So on one hand, Dr. King championed the civil rights, the civil liberties of blacks, but he was also very sensitive and concerned about the civil rights of Jews, whether it was his abiding and unequivocal support of Israel, his involvement in what was the cause celebre of world jury back in the 60s, and that was to free the Soviet Jews from the Soviet Empire, mm -hmm. and also Dr. King's total disdain, his zero tolerance for anti-Semitism, particularly if that began to emanate mm -hmm. from within the black community. So I think that the historic black Jewish alliance needs to be viewed, it's only the role that Jews played for the black community. It's also with the head of, this, of the black community, the role he played for the Jewish community in, in fighting and combating for our civil rights and concerns as well. So the organization I'm proud to lead, uh, the National Urban League at that time, was led by a great American by the name of Whitney Young. Right. And Whitney Young, along with Dr. King, were part of this Big Six. Uh, and the Big Six Civil Rights Alliance uh, I think embraced uh, the vision of the relationship with the Jewish community uh, mm -hmm. in those days in a very important and profound way. For Whitney Young, uh, it was uh, building relationships with business leaders, uh, including uh, Jewish business leaders here in New York, who were supporting not only the Civil Rights Act of 64 and the Voting Rights Act, but supporting this idea that after these laws were passed, mm -hmm. there had to be open doors to opportunities, economic opportunities, job opportunities, and business opportunities. Uh, and I think that the bridges with the Jewish community helped to promote that and helped to push that. And so we've got, uh, you know, a current contemporary, I think, uh, need to also think about this in the context of what kind of nation we are trying to build mm -hmm. in the 21st century. Mm -hmm. uh, the 60s provide lessons. They provide us with lessons in courage, lessons in strategy, mm -hmm. lessons in tactics. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the 21st century, uh, we have to recognize it is about uh, the America of today and tomorrow. And Dr. King uh, counseled us uh, in 1963 when he talked about uh, the type of nation he wanted his children to live in. Mm -hmm. I think we have to be inspired as well to think about the type of nation we want our children, our children and grandchildren to live in and what that means in a multi-ethnic, multi-religious, multicultural society. Mm -hmm. It requires respect. It requires tolerance. It requires understanding. It requires equity. It requires equality and empathy it, and empathy and compassion it requires all right. of those those qualities and i i feel so strongly that uh, when i think about growing up in new orleans and thinking about the work my parents did and the alliances they were seeking to build and how essential it was to uh, a more open uh, new orleans a more open society when my father first ran for uh, mayor of New Orleans in 1977, seeking to become the city's first African-American mayor. Uh, I, I recall vividly, you know, he got to the second election, the runoff election, primarily on the strength of the black community support. Mm -hmm. In the second election, he had to try to secure 20% of the white community support, which was a tall order for a black man in the 1970s, this in ten, 10 years after the Voting Rights Act. And one of his primary uh, sources of support was New Orleans' Jewish community sure. and its leaders and its political leaders and its, uh, its civic leaders who embraced him uh, in that race uh, at a time when uh, a black man securing white support for the mayor of New Orleans was a difficult task. And because of that support, he was able to win. And it created, it was 
its, its foundation was the relationships my father had built as a civil rights leader in New Orleans. And he and my mother and their work with the Jewish community. So I think there's a tremendous number of examples. I mean, we shouldn't be naive mm -hmm. about the work that has to be done, about uh, the, the challenges in restoring the alliance, uh, about uh, sometimes the differences of opinion on a range of issues that may exist, because no community, not the black community and not the Jewish community, is monolithic mm -hmm. in its thoughts about issues, in its thoughts about politics. but. We're talking about foundationally uh, having a working relationship. Yes. And that's what I'm committed to. Thank you very much. Um, let me ask you quite specifically, what are some of the challenges to restoring the Black Jewish Alliance in the 21st century? And what are your respective organizations doing to confront those challenges? Well, I find, you know, speaking for the Jewish community, mm -hmm. um, there is a sense that within the black community there has been a diminution in terms of support, solidarity with mm -hmm. the State of Israel, um, a greater affinity, particularly um, younger blacks now feel for the Palestinian cause. Um, and that's something that uh, we need to work together in terms of trying to explain, you know, what the state of Israel means, you know, to the Jewish people, not only in contemporary terms, but also historically. And the Jewish community, I think, has become much more sensitive uh, to being involved in uh, social justice issues, you know, affecting the black community. Mm -hmm. And we have a new phenomenon here in this country, and that's, you know, the movement of Jews of color. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's a stereotype, you know, of Jew being white. Well, that's no longer the case. I believe now almost 15, I think it's 13 or 15 percent of the American Jewish community uh, identify as uh, Jews who are Jews of color. You know, so mm -hmm. that is also a great opportunity for the Jewish community to be exposed, to be educated, to be sensitized um, as to what are you know, some of the issues and uh, what are some of the perspectives you know, of the black community. So I think because the uh, issues around the state of Israel, uh, and I, I don't purport to speak for all black people, but I think black people, there's a, a sense among those that pay attention of what is the right balance between the integrity and security of Israel mm -hmm. and the affirmation of the rights of Palestinians or Arabs who live in uh, Israel or who are part of the region. And I think uh, uh, most African Americans uh, who pay close attention to this, or many I should say, want to understand what the balance, what the appropriate balance is to support the integrity of the state uh, and the reasons and, and, and historic antecedents of the state, while at the same time, uh, because of our position in this country as a numerical minority, uh, having some affinity with the rights of the minority. And I mm -hmm. think that is really also an understanding that within the domestic politics of Israel, this is also a debate. Of course. Uh, and, and, and an issue. And I think we have to help people to understand mm -hmm. and help educate people more about where that balance lies in this conversation mm -hmm. and in this debate. I think many uh, uh, African-American elected leaders mm -hmm. right, uh, also, I think, operate on this issue based on the politics of their district yes. or their city or, or community. Or many of their colleagues in Congress. I mean, yeah. in, in a very positive way, if you look at the voting records of the Congressional Black the Caucus, Caucus and the Jewish Congressional Delegation, close. You know, it's very, very you know, close. So, uh, As our but, time is winding down, let me no. just ask you to <laughs> respond very briefly, 30 seconds. Um, Rabbi Shania, you touched upon the state of Israel. In what ways 
do the politics around support for the state of Israel and the Israeli-Palestinian conflict itself impact on the Black Jewish Alliance? Does the Black Jewish Alliance need to exist despite the Jewish community's strong support for the state of Israel, or can it simply exist alongside it? The Black Jewish Alliance must exist at the same time any misunderstandings or conflict over the state of Israel. I see that obstacle as an opportunity, as mm -hmm. an opportunity to educate, to expose um, members of the black community, as Mark just said so eloquently, as to the antecedents mm -hmm. of the state of Israel vis-a-vis -vis the American Jewish community. Thank you, Rabbi Schneider. And I would Mr. just Morial, reaffirm seconds, that, that, that you know, what helps build any alliance is a deeper interest and understanding mm -hmm. of both its roots and also the contemporary, if you will, challenges that it faces. Mm -hmm. I agree with Rabbi Schneier that in the pot potential for conflict, there's an opportunity. Absolutely. It's an opportunity to better educate because, uh, you know, I am just by, by predisposition a believer in finding the right balance mm -hmm. Uh, on many of these issues, and I think that uh, uh, I've long been a supporter of the state mm -hmm. uh, and its integrity because I'm a deep, deep uh, student of history. And history and you're leads also a me profound to, thinker. <laughs> leads me to a particular point, uh, and that point is, is the necessity and the need for the state. While at the same time, I'm a believer in equity, and I'm a believer in the rights of those who've been locked out and left out, and that leads me to believing I, that I, there is also a sense of I, fairness, right. and, and, and the rights of the Palestinians have to be affirmed. You, you struck the balance, Mark. I, I mm -hmm. wish we had more time. I can't believe that we are, sadly, we need to conclude already. I feel privileged to have had this conversation with you uh, during Black History Thank Month. You. There is so much more work to be done, but I think having the two of you at the helm in the leadership of your respective organizations, working together, bringing communities together in solidarity with one another, I can only forecast an even better and brighter future thank for you, the Howard. state of black Jewish relations. Well, thank you for having me. Thank you, Mr. Yeah, thank, you. Thank, you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Always. Thank you, Robert. Always, Bye. always a pleasure. We would be pleased to send a complimentary DVD of this program to anyone who wishes to support JBS with a tax-deductible gift of $36, double chai, or more. Simply visit the JBS website at jbstv.org and click on the Donate button to make a donation by PayPal or your credit card. And please indicate the program for which you would like a DVD. Or you can send your tax-deductible check to JBS. Post Office Box 360, Stamford, Connecticut 06904. Or you can call the JBS Pledge Line at 833-MY-JBS-TV. That's 833-695-2788. And again, please remember to indicate which program you would like to receive with our compliments. We thank you for your kind support.